ahead and get started with that right now. And so today we're going to go through quantitative genetics and then review your uh, problem set to kind of clarify any confusing concepts that there might have been on that. And so to begin, we'll go over your recitation as we normally would. And so the first question is a breeder wants to develop a variety of soybean, which is resistant to sudden death syndrome, and then asks you if this is a quantitative trait or a qualitative trait. Now, Dr. Souza in lecture gave this kind of graph where if it was quantitative, you'd see kind of a distribution. And if it's qualitative, more often than not, you're going to be counting kind of presence and absence. So if you had disease resistance versus susceptible varieties, it's a qualitative trait. It's, con it's uh, controlled by few or only one gene. And so many times breeders integrates one particular gene into a variety of interest that confers disease resistance. And that's the one that I always typically think of when I think of a qualitatively controlled trait. On the other hand, you could have a trait that is quantitatively, that is a quantitative trait. And in this case, it's under the control of Q or many genes or of many genes. And in that case, from your population, you would see kind of a distribution of a value. And the most often one that breeders are interested in is yield. And there are many things which impact yield, not just your genotype, but also the environment in which you're growing in and the interaction between your genotype and your environment. So next, the question is, uh, the phenotype of an individual is determined by phenotype or by genotype, environment, and environment interaction. And so that brings us to one of our core equations. As I was discussing uh, with quantitative traits, it could be the yield is impacted by your environment, could be interacted by the environment. The overall equation, the simple equation that's given for this is P equals G plus G by E. Oh, actually, never mind. One second. Plus E for your environment, plus the interaction between the two. So you have your genotype impacting your phenotype, you have your environment that could impact your phenotype, and the interaction between your particular genotype and your environment, and all these result in what you physically see or what you can measure from a particular field. And so now it asks if that soybean breeder wants to breed a variety which performs 10% better than current varieties on the market, then that's an example of quantitative trait as we previously discussed. And so now you are kind of going to break down various compo uh, variance components of the two main equations that you guys need to know. So the first one is where you have your genotypic variance, which will equal additive variance plus epistatic invariant variance plus dominant variance. And each of these variances measure different things. That's a little bit deeper than we're going to go in this class. But what you need to know is that when you're given a chart like this, if you want to find genotypic variance, you need these three components. When one's missing, you just use some basic algebra to find the value that's missing, and that would be added invariance. On a similar note, we have this guy right here, which is your phenotypic variance. equals your genotypic variance plus your envi environmental variance plus your variance due to G by E. Very similar, it's just dealing with variance components now. Similarly, you have these values in a table and you go and you check if you're looking for phenotypic variance in genotypic G by E and environmental variance, you sum all those up and it gets you your phenotypic variance. And then you want to look and look at heritability. So you have two types of heritability. You have broad sense and you have narrow sense. And pretty much the only difference between these two is in the numerator. So with broad sense heritability, you're looking at your genotypic variance over your phenotypic variance. With narrow sense heritability, excuse me, you're looking at your additive variance over your phenotypic variance. 
dominant denominator will stay the same, the phenotypic variance. Your numerator is going to differ. These two, like all these additive variants, mean different things, and breeders interpret them in different ways to see how heritable a trait is. Once again, that's a little bit deeper than we're going to go into this class. In general, all you need to know is the larger this very this broad sense or narrow sense value is, the more heritable that trait is. So are there any questions kind of walking through these equations and how you could put, how you could take apart a graph like this using these equations? I have a question more related to like broad sense and narrow sense. Mm -hmm. um, will you ever have a case that like your broad sense is a pretty high value, but your narrow sense isn't? And if that happens, is it still heritable or not? Hmm. That's a good question. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know how to answer that because that goes into what that additive variance means. And so I guess you could have a case where if you're just looking at that additive variance value, if you go with narrow sense heritability, then it could be larger. But then again, that goes into how you want to interpret these two equations, which is something that I'm not too familiar with. I'm not comfortable probably giving you a straightforward answer on that. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions? Cool. All right. So we can work through the example problem that you had in your recitation. And so we have three breed of cattle or different yeah, breeds of cattle here. And we have different values associated with each one. The first value we want to find for our Angus is genotypic variance. So in this case, what would be the genotypic variance associated with the Angus breed of cattle? So what? Twenty five plus twelve plus fifteen. Yeah. Yep. Fifty two. Okay, now that we have our genotypic variance, we can find our phenotypic variance. So what would be that value? Mm -hmm. Two plus eighteen plus fifty-two plus eighteen plus twelve. Yep. Yep. Eighty-two. Okay, and so now that we have this value, our phenotypic variance, we can find our narrow sense and our broad sense heritability. So what are those? For narrow sense or for broad sense? Check the 0 0.634. For narrow sense? 0 0.304. 0 0.304. Yep. All right. Now we're looking to find our dominant variance component. So, how do we find that? Plus yep, 32 plus 17 minus 58. Nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. All right. So now we've got on our phenotypic variance component, which similar last time is 58 plus 23 plus 19. I guess that's a value. Oh, All right. So now what's our narrow sense variable? Yep. 0.320. Broad sense? Yeah. Okay. This one is pretty straightforward. We have all the values aligned. Now we just need to find our phenotypic variance, which is 56 plus 29 plus 12. Right, so narrow sense heritability. Zero point, what are we looking at here? 56. Five, seven, seven. Or no, we're looking, that's broad sense. All right, so what was narrow sense again? Zero point three four zero. Yep. 